Many fans are incensed that Singtel and StarHub's price increase, as it will cost them three times more to watch the World Cup matches from home, compared to back in 2006. But would this drive them to get their free cake in pubs instead? Razor TV asks pubs in Clark Key if the World Cup broadcast fee hike means their business will be sidelined or see a boom. Hopefully, it'll be good for us because price has gone up for the home use and uh, commercialized, we are paying even more. So hopefully, we have more guests coming in for the World Cup to look at the game here. What we think about increase of price doesn't much affect us because right now we are lucky and we have we are in a very good position and where we are now we can't have the thing that everybody's looking at and we don't have it right. basically all our neighbors here are all going to have it also right. you know what I mean? it's a quite of the vital thing to have we have people start inquiring about having a function or corporate events or only for certain matches so i think the demand is there also again it's because of the time the period of the game is from 7 to 10 to 1 o'clock it's very uh, healthy for local or Asian time. What are the popular matches? Uh, of course, the big matches, the Brazil involved, the Argentina, and all the top three, the Spain, and all. I believe this price increase is, uh, we don't have a lot of choice. I mean, we'll still be showing the World Cup because uh, we love the sport. At this outlet, we support football very much. And on top of that, we take it as a form of our customer service to provide um, this live telecast of the World Cup to our guests. So, we'll just bite the bullet and still telecast the game live, and um, not increase any of our own prices here. It's expensive. It's it's a lot more than it's been. That makes it difficult. But you know, the other side of it is that the first screen is basically if you break it down, it's about three thousand dollars. We figure there's almost thirty. There's twenty nine games that show before midnight. Um, so that means it's costing us about a hundred dollars a game for the first screen, about fifty dollars a game for the next screen. That that means the big screen, the first screen, we need to sell ten extra beers. Uh, that is a break even. So it's not a huge burden for us. And you know, I can understand people. The guys want to make money. You got to pay a fifty million dollar transfer fee. FIFA wants to get in and uh, take a little bit of that. So certainly, I'm just happy we've got it. I mean, we are trying to plan ways around whether we're going to put a sling box in Malaysia or something. So, you know, to an extent, for 10 extra beers on a night, I'm quite happy to have it. To give us a rough estimate of the previous World Cup, uh, how many customers were there? How was the takings like? Okay, you know, some of the games, I, I remember sitting outside and watching Italy play um, the U.S. the last time. It was it was fantastic. Um, you know, it, it'll add 10 or 15 percent to our revenues if the game's exciting and, and a lot of people come out for it. So, you know, it's good for us, but it's, it's not going to have a huge impact. We see over 1,200 customers a day at Brewworks Riverside right. Point. So, um, you know, when you're full just about every night, it's hard to put more people in. And tell us, why is the World Cup so important for establishments such as pubs? Oh, I guess it's a good time where people unite at this, at this, at this point of time. You know, people from various countries come together, people meet together. And it, in other ways, uh, it, it brings revenue once again. It brings revenue to all the establishment, food and F&B establishments and, and other establishments as well. So football fans here will be heartened to know that most pubs will be screening the games. After all, what's football without a pint in hand? Up next, we show you other ways to catch the World Cup this June.